Happy Saturday, everybody. It's going to be a beautiful day out here. We're having really, really nice weather. I think we'll be up into the 70s today, so <laughs> spring is coming. And you know what that means is I've got to clean out my pond today. This is a yearly task that I have to do that I haven't done in about four or five years. <laughs> so it's uh, really overgrown. You can see this is all papyrus uh, growing here, and it's all just completely busting out of the pots. And that's normal, because it just grows like crazy in there. And what I have to do is I have to just cut the pots apart and just put in new ones and then thin out all of that papyrus. But, and I've got some reeds, you know, different types of grasses growing back here. They're all kind of dormant right now. That's why they're all brown, but they'll be greening up soon. So I gotta take care of all that. And that's pretty much like an all day job. I gotta get the fish out of there too. And uh, it's a huge, huge deal. So I'll show you the results of that next time I shoot a mere minute. So, so you got that to look forward to. Oh, I also wanted to show you this. It's too early to plant tomatoes, but, and you can see this in my vegetable garden. It starts to get taken over by just wild grasses and stuff. But look, that's my artichoke plant. Remember last year, if you watch mere minutes, you'll know that this thing was just not growing at all during the summer. It was just ugh, flat. And so this winter, I haven't done anything to it. I just let it sit there and it's growing like crazy. So I don't know. I hope we get some artichokes off of it. It's always fun, the things that people will send me from time to time, but I want to show you what Jason Carroll sent me and I got in the mail yesterday. <laughs> huge box of Mardi Gras stuff. It's uh, all sorts of different types of beads and there's the little baby. I know about the little baby. You're supposed to bake a cake or something and put them in there and I guess whoever chomps down on the baby goes to the dentist. <laughs> it's just a treasure trove of just stuff. I, I don't know. All sorts of, uh, you know, necklaces and beads and things for, <laughs> for Mardi Gras. There's a lot of cool, you know, lighted up stuff. Some really tacky, kitschy stuff, which of course I like. So anyways, uh, thanks a lot, Jason. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it all. He suggested maybe I do some sort of woodworking project with it, which is interesting because I was planning this year, I wanted to do a project for Mardi Gras, but I, I really couldn't come up with anything and then some other things kind of got in the way. But anyways, if anybody has any ideas for next year for a Mardi Gras pro project, what would be a thing that you might make for Mardi Gras? You know, let me know. Maybe we can uh, come up with something. Okay, I got lots of stuff to go over, so pay attention. <laughs> um, there'll be a test afterward. Let's see. Oh, first of all, a couple of people were asking me if I was going to do a Harlem Shake video. And by a couple of people, I mean two people. Uh, yes, I'm gonna do a Harlem Shake video because as you know, I'm all about internet memes and staying on top of what is current and will be gone in about one week. So, you ready for this? Here's my Harlem Shake video. Okay, you ready for it? Nah. Okay, now as for the credenza, uh, a lot of people wanted to see what it looked like all set up and I'll show that to you here in a minute. I'll go up into the house. I got it set up yesterday. It takes a long time to set all of my components in there and everything, uh, but I just didn't have it done, set up, by the time I wanted to get the video out. Uh, which brings me to the question, and people were asking me how long it took to build, and it actually only took three days. I designed it over the weekend last weekend, and I started building it on Monday, and had it done by Wednesday, and then was doing finishing on Thursday, and then brought it up into the house Thursday night, and I didn't want to have to set up all of my components on Thursday night, because that's just too too confusing, but I'll, I'll show you all of that later. So it didn't take a long time to build, because it's not, it's really not complicated, it's simple. If that were a small box this big, you would think, wow, there's really nothing to it, and there really isn't anything to it. How much did it cost? It cost me about $250. That was a, a fairly big project for me, but we really needed one, and I, I thought, you know, it'd be nice to make a good piece of furniture that looks nice in the living room. Uh, but I, it was expensive in that respect. Well, it's not expensive compared to how much you pay if you want to buy one of those. <laughs> I've seen them online for several thousand dollars, so hey, there's a business you can get into and make a lot of money, make some credentials because that retro 50s style furniture is really hot right now. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, but uh, I used the cherry plywood, which was this three quarter inch plywood was like $70 a sheet. So it was a little bit extravagant. You know, you could use pine plywood, cabinet grade plywood, I think would look great. And that would be much cheaper, probably half, of the, half the price. Uh, but it took, uh, another question I was asked is how much plywood does it take? And it took me uh, two sheets of three quarter inch plywood and then it only took about half a sheet of the quarter inch plywood. I, I'll, let me show you. And this is what I have left of that plywood. So I actually have quite a bit left 
over the I'll use for other projects. The finish I used on that was this uh, deft uh, clear wood finish. It's brushing lacquer and I, I've used this plenty of times before but I always get the gloss lacquer. This was the first time I've used the satin brushing lacquer and I thought I'd give it a try and uh, I don't know if I really like it too much. I don't really see the point of it because you can get a satin finish with the glossy lacquer just by uh, sanding off the, f the final finish and then rubbing it out and b before bringing it all the way up to gloss just stop at a satin finish. I've, I've done videos on that before. So um, I didn't really see the advantage to using this. It was kind of different to use. It's got a milky color when you put it on. It's not clear like the regular gloss lacquer. So I, I think I'll just stick with the regular gloss. A few people noticed that I used a lot of Craig products in my video and <laughs> in a lot of my videos and want to know if they sponsor me. They don't. Uh, I just really like their products. They, although they sent me a bunch of their stuff, so I use it in, you know, I mentioned it, it's Craig, but they don't, they're not really sponsoring me. It'd be cool if they did, if they wanted to like, uh, you know, pay for ads or something on my website where I could earn a, a steady source of income from Craig. Hey, Craig, if you're listening, <laughs> let's talk. But I just really like their products. And this is the shelf pin jig. And the funny thing is, is I only... I bought this one last week. This is two of them that they, you can hook them together. And I bought this one because I thought, you know, it's just so difficult to make those holes and get them all lined up in cabinets. I'm just going to splurge and get a shelf pin jig. And after I got this and I started, looking, I started going through some of my stuff and I already had one of these. Craig sent me a bunch of stuff a while back. <laughs> They sent me one of these. I hadn't even taken it out of the box, so <laughs> that's why I had two. Now I'm really going to do the Harlem Shake. You ready for it? No. All right, here's the credenza with all of my components in it and the TV on top. And wow, I'm really, really happy with the way this works out. A couple of things I wanted to show you about this. Uh, first of all, these finger poles I put in here, these little brass poles, these are for uh, sliding closet doors, pocket doors. And the problem with them is, is that the wood is quarter inch thick and these extend out a little bit further. So it's okay here, except if this shelf were down in this position, it wouldn't work. And then another problem is when it comes over here, it hits the center divider. So what I do is I have to pull it out just a little bit and slide it past. I guess, you know, it's a minor problem. It's nothing I can't, you know, just deal with but it's something to be aware of, or you don't even really need those. You could just use finger holes. And these are just stuck in there right now. They're not even glued in, but I think I may epoxy them in. One thing to consider is the depth of your shelves. Now, I measured all of my components out and figured that I would have plenty of room for them, but the problem is that you need at least six inches behind at least my receiver for all that mess of cords that's back there. And so as a result, it just barely fits in here. You can see when the door opens, it just barely clears that. It works, but it would have been nice if I'd made it maybe just a half inch deeper would have made a big difference. A couple of people mentioned that these sliding doors, one way to do it is to make the groove in the top deeper so then you could just plop the door in there. You don't have to have it permanently in there. And I actually thought about that when I designed this, but I didn't want to have to make a separate groove up in the plywood. I thought I would just make the rabbit and put this end cap on there and keep it simple. And by doing that, I'm only left with, well, half of a three quarter inch piece of plywood. So like a three eighths inch to glue this front on there. So I just decided to put them all in and I don't really see any any reason to ever take them out anyway. Well, there you have it. I got it all covered. Make sure that you uh, tune in next time. You can see what my pond looks like when it's, <laughs> when it's all cleaned up. And, and hey, maybe I'll do that Harlem Shake in the next video. And I'll, I'll also do a Gangnam Style video. And maybe I'll go back and do a, a Macarena. Nah. <laughs>